Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications on future uploads. Hello everyone, Someone Bart here, or you can call me Sully. Yes, I know I'm late on this one again. It is February and I'm doing the December 2022 movie reviews, but who cares at this point? It's a shorter list this time. I'm looking over five movies that I saw in theaters in December 2022. Hopefully the next one's a lot shorter. Probably not. The first one I'm looking at is a Christmas action comedy flick that is both fun and funny and has now become one of my favorite Christmas flicks. Violet Night. Director Tommy Ricola has made a fun and funny Christmas action comedy with good characters, a unique story, and fun effects and kills. It certainly does a fascinating mix of the plot and action of Die Hard with the comedy of Home Alone and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, yet presented in a much more hard-hitting and violent realism with a touch of holiday magic. And I find myself enjoying this film immensely. It's definitely another favorite Christmas film of mine, along with a few other modern holiday films of the past few years, and more, and it's quite the instant one at best. It might be on my list of favorite Christmas movies for all the holiday fun within it, but also for its bloody and funny mayhem. Three stars. The second film is a sequel that I liked a little more than the previous film, even if it retrends elements and points of the original. Avatar The Way of Water Director James Cameron has made an alright sequel to his original Avatar movie from 2009 with okay characters, a semi-repetitive but decent story, and beautiful effects. While I found the first film to have a lackluster story and characters being similar to Fern Gully, Pocahontas, and Dances with Wolves, but has colorful visuals and unique creatures and world building on a big scale, this one's not quite the same. But it does have familiar beats and moments as the original, except with a water tribe of the Navi. And there are new or different things in it, but just a few, ranging from one character's connection to the spirit world and a returning villain set on revenge. Yet there's less focus on human characters, as there's only very few, and not as much greed or prejudice as the original film. Plus the visuals and underwater moments are neat to look at, and some new ideas are interesting, particularly around one character that I hope gets explored more in the later sequels. And the action's as alright as the first film. However, if the sequels do retrend areas of the original, and I hope not as this film introduced more stuff that are only touched upon, then maybe one or two of these films would be enough. At the very least, I never got bored during this 3 hour and 10 minute film, and the new things and visuals kept my interest high enough for possibly more. Two and a half plus stars. And this next one, surprisingly, is one of my new favorite movies of 2022, and it's the first one I saw from the director of La La Land, Babylon. Director Damien Giselle has done a great job of making a comedy drama set in the mid-1920s to early 1930s with unique characters, an interesting story, and neat effects when needed. While it's inspired by true events, it certainly plays more like a glorified and grittier take on Sitting in the Rain about Hollywood in the 1920s and the advent of talkies and sound in movies after the jazz singer premiered. But as much as it showcases the film industry of the time and how out of control it could be, and with silent films dying out, it's all through the eyes of its characters witnessing and adapting to the change, for better or worse, including a big silent film star, a black trumpet player, a gossip columnist, an Asian performer, and two nobodies making their place in Hollywood, one becoming a star, and one going from a production assistant to a producer. And though it's a lot wild and chaotic, especially in the first 30 to 40 minutes before the film's title is shown, and the film editing compliments that to where something's going down, it's quite an edge-of-the-seat experience. All culminating to an ending that very much summarizes the entire film, but in such a huge and visual way that it made me say, wow. Despite its 3 hour and 9 minute length that I hardly noticed, it's one that I would definitely see again in an instant. 3 or 3.5 three stars. 
The next one is a musical biopic of Whitney Houston, and it's all done fine, and even avoided the many tropes of musical biopics of musical artists. I want to dance with somebody. Director Casey Lehmans has done a nice job of making a musical biopic of Whitney Houston with fine characters, a fine story, and fine effects when needed. It's a pretty interesting film on an iconic singer and doesn't always use the cliches of other movies about a vocal artist or musician. Except for maybe one thing, even if it's true. And there's no racial tension throughout the movie, with the only drama points being relationship and marital issues, money problems, and drug-related incidents. However, the film mainly focuses on Whitney from her late teens, early 20s to her passing and no moments of her childhood, which is very rare for these films, and it also showcases her concerts, recording sessions, music videos, and brief behind the scenes of The Bodyguard, sometimes in a montage sequence. Plus, there's some good humor that I also laughed at, especially with Stanley Tucci as Whitney's manager, likable or lovable moments of chemistry, an upbeat feel to the renditions of Whitney's songs, and Naomi Atti does a nice job performing and singing, even if she can't quite hit those high notes just right. And outside of a few issues I have, including a couple of missing scenes and a title change in my opinion, I had a fine time with this flick. Two and a half plus or three stars. And the last one is a sequel to a spin-off of one of DreamWorks' well-known franchises. And it's a neat one for its animation, story, and characters. But that's it for me. Puts in Boots, The Last Wish. Director Joel Crawford has done an alright job of making a sequel slash spin-off of the Shrek movies with good characters, a decent story, and colorful and fun animation. While I found the Shrek movies to be a mixed bag, with the first Shrek film being one of my favorite movies, Shrek 2 being good, Shrek the Third and Shrek Forever After being forgettable, and Puss in Boots being alright, yet forgettable at times. This Puss in Boots sequel is in between Shrek 2 and Puss in Boots, in that it's a good return to DreamWorks' world of fractured fairy tales, as there's more references to other stories, fairy tales, and nursery rhymes that the other Shrek movies didn't include, cameos of Shrek characters, one character design that's cool looking, some fun action, cute moments, and animation having more of a storybook look. But with that said, the comedy rarely got a laugh from me, or not as much as the first two Shrek films. Yet the film is nicely done in a way where the original Puss in Boots film isn't required viewing but recommended. And there is a nice lesson by the end of it all, and one or two sweet moments. So overall, it's a moderately fine film. It has lots of fun moments and lovely visuals, but not so much for its humor and at least is a step up from the bad guys that DreamWorks did earlier. Two and a half plus stars. And that is it. So if you go for joining me, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, support me on Patreon, and until next time, for a new video.